nearly up to the end of week one of the Men's T20 World Cup 2024. And this is when New Zealand start their campaign. They take on Afghanistan in their Group C opener. And no easing into the campaign for New Zealand, given that they find themselves in the group of death. We build up to that game on Maruti Suzuki Arena, presents the SPN 54 timeout with an old guest and a fellow Mumbai car, we may almost say, joining us now that he's back in familiar confines. Mitch McLennigan, so great to have you back on ESPN Cooking Four. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it's nice to be home. It feels strange. I've spent so much time with you guys over the last couple of months. Uh, I kind of forgot who my family was. <laughs> yeah, welcome back. And this is where the ceremony ends, because much like New Zealand, because New Zealand have no time to ease themselves into this World Cup. They are in what is being perceived as a group of death. Afghanistan and West Indies featuring alongside them. And Afghanistan and West Indies are the first two games. Rarely do you find an ICC men's event where you go into your first couple of group stage games with as much riding on it. Yeah, there's so much riding on it. I'll tell you what, the, the main thing I'm really concerned about is a lot of the players actually haven't had any game time, uh, particularly on the batting front for New Zealand. Uh, Finn Allen missed the Pakistan series with a back injury, didn't travel Conway's been out with injury for such a long period of time. Kane Williamson played a couple of games in the IPL, and and Mitchell set, uh, Mitchell was the only one who really kind of got some genuine game time with the bats, and he improved as the tournament went on, but he's the only one because Phillips sat out as well, and Nisham hasn't really been playing as well. So that's the core of your batting unit uh, going into very difficult conditions. I, I must say, when I... When I saw this schedule come out in the World Cup and it was going to be New Zealand's first game against Afghanistan in Guyana. Now, I've played in Guyana. It is a very, very difficult place to play. Uh, it's I know it's been relayed. It used to be very low and slow. You used to be able to pitch the ball eight metres and it's still only come halfway up the stump. So I know it has changed a little bit since then, but it's still not an out-and-out -out flat track. So... It definitely favours the lineup that Afghanistan have got. And, and when you're coming off the back of no real games, albeit they've been training there for a few days now, uh, it's going to be a very difficult challenge. Yeah, you set us up perfectly for what seems like the matchup that will uh, be so decisive in this contest. Uh, these conditions, then that Afghanistan spin attack and that lack of game time for so many of New Zealand's batters, uh, how do they overcome this challenge? Uh, well, they're going to have to overcome it, aren't they? Because uh, they need to get a win on the board. Uh, I think Afghanistan are going to do some some good things in this World Cup. I think their form in the last one-day World Cup was sublime. I think they're only growing with confidence. And uh, New Zealand against the spin bowling uh, since the last 2022 World Cup has not been great. They have lost 17 wickets to spin in the middle at an average of 15 and, and our uh, economy rate of 6.1. So that's a, that's a massive concern. And and I know everyone's kind of wondering, oh, you know, it's Afghanistan. You know, historically, yes, they've got some good spinners, but how good are they? Well, they are the best in the world. It is going to be an out-and-out -out test uh, spin against the batting of New Zealand. My biggest concern uh, for New Zealand is the focus that they put on that spin. Uh, because Afghanistan have got some very good quicks coming through as well. And uh, we saw Faisal Faruqi do extremely well the other night against Uganda. Uh, they take five for nine. Uh, and a lot of people will be saying, yes, that was Uganda. You'd expect someone like Faisal Faruqi to do well. Uh, but you look at the deliveries that he bowled, and and I, I would say that a lot of those deliveries would have challenged the best batsman in the world. And he looks like in good form after not having played for some time as well, being on Hyderabad and not playing a game. I, I think they've got a whole a well-rounded bowling unit now. They never used to have those seamers, but now they've got Faruqi. They've got Naveen Uh You've you've got guys like Naib who can bowl a couple. Omazai, we know who, how dangerous he can be with the ball if it swings. So it's not just a one-dimensional attack now. And for New Zealand, their batting units is uh, it's an interesting one. I, I, my biggest concern is. What I saw in the last World Cup and the last couple of World Cups is two of our best batsmen in probably all formats in Conway and Kane Williamson. Uh, yes, they've had good averages since the last in the last two World Cups. Conway averaging 34 and Kane Williamson nearly 40, averaging a 39. But their strike rates have both been very, very low. Uh, that's a major concern for me. And, and I know these conditions 
may mean that you've just got to battle it out and get the job done and get the win done. So that strike mate might not be as significant of a factor. But what I saw in the last World Cup was when you lost the wicket of Finn Allen at the top for New Zealand, the whole impetus came out of the attack. And, and when Conway and Williamson batted together in a few of those games, they really struggled to, to get any momentum going in the innings and, and often left a little bit too much for Phillips and Nisham to do. So I, I preferably, I would love for them to, to be adventurous. And if Finn Allen gets out early, I'd love for them to look at putting Phillips up the order or Daryl Mitchell and break that partnership up. But uh, the way Gary Stead works, I, I believe he's just going to go status quo. So that's what I'm watching. I want to, want to see how Conway and Williamson bat together uh, and how they can combat that spin in the middle if they get to that phase. All right, so that's the top three. If you look at the New Zealand squad, uh, after that, there is a whole lot of all-rounders to pick from. Seven of them in the squad, five of whom both spin. Uh that, that's a luxury, but it also complicates things in terms of team selection. So how would you go about it? What to you is the ideal mix for New Zealand to go in with mm-hmm. against Afghanistan? Well, I'll start with the mix that they're going to roll, and then I'll tell you my ideal mix. <laughs> uh, the uh, Gary Stead is very, very firm on making sure he has five bowlers. That's what his belief is when it comes to T20 cricket. He picks the first five, the best five bowlers, and then builds his team around that. So historically, that's going to be Tim Southey, Lockie Ferguson, Trent Bolt, with East Sodi and Mitchell Satner. That's what we've seen in the past. And, and I don't see them breaking away from that too much. My concern is it means Mitchell Satner's at seven. It doesn't give you a lot of flexibility in your batting order. Uh, and I think in these conditions, in this tournament, uh, I think you can play those guys who, like you say, the all-rounders can bowl one over here, uh, two overs there if they're bowling well. Say Glenn Phillips is bowling well. He might get three, maybe even four overs. I think the part-timers can really do a job in these conditions. It's uh, it's going to favor them a little bit more instead of just that out-and-out out five bowling options. And when the conditions are favorable for bowling, particularly in low-scoring tournaments, uh, like we've seen so far throughout this tournament, you're going to need that extra batter. So I would like to see New Zealand line up without each Sodi. As good as he is, he's a great T20 bowler, but I think the likes of Michael Bracewell can do a really good job uh, sliding into that number seven role, uh, and Mitchell Satner can drop down to eight. That just gives me a little bit more comfort, uh, knowing that you've still got Glenn Phillips who can bowl a couple of overs. You've got Jimmy Neesham who can bowl a couple of overs. You've got Daryl Mitchell as well. So you're not, like you say, you've got a lot of all-round options, so you don't really need to go in with those five bowlers, but... Uh, I think they will go with those guys, but I'd like to see either Racha Ravindra or Michael Brace will come into that number seven slot. It also gives you that flexibility of that left-hander that you can throw up the order so you can bat them at four or five. Racha Ravindra's strike rate against spin, Brace will as well, is very, very high. Uh, I think Racha Ravindra is up in the 180s against left-arm spin and, and leg spin. So these guys who can come in and have an impact in the middle and allow you to drop... Glenn Phillips and Jimmy Neesham down the order just a little bit uh, and get them into that final phase as opposed to exposing them too early. Okay, that's the setup done. For all time's sake, uh, throw in an outrageous prediction. Oh, outrageous prediction. Uh, I, oh, wow, this is a very, very difficult one, isn't it? Uh, I think my outrageous prediction will be I, I think Afghanistan might win this and that that's really really difficult for me to say uh I I think if if New Zealand work don't break break the partnership at the top we saw how good Gerbaz and Zidane were at the top if they don't break that partnership early with the likes of Trent Bolt who's been sublime in the power play uh it could be very very difficult for New Zealand to to be able to chase a total that that they get in, in those conditions in particular so that's my outrageous pick. Uh, if New Zealand win, which I'm hoping they do, uh, I think they'll get there. They'll struggle. I think it'll be, if they're chasing, it'll be seven down um, or, or they'll just be able to defend a, a total and and what I think are going to be tough conditions. We're not keeping score this time, but I would completely accept that as an outrageous and maybe even give you extra points. So thank you for setting the game up for us. We look forward to your company through this World Cup. That does it. Uh, as we build up to New Zealand and Afghanistan, this was Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Cricket Four Timer. 
Introducing the Epic New Swift. Time to go swifting.